cables let's talk about cables i absolutely love them and they feel exactly right for this time of year i associate gorgeous cables with fall and all those beautiful aran style sweaters you know we've got lots of cable designs in the current issue and of course my latest sock design uses all my favorite cables let's talk about how to work them Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of how to actually work a cable. I'm at the point in my pattern and the instruction says that I'm to slip stitches to a cable needle. Here's my big old cable needle. It's just a DPN, works brilliantly. When you're slipping the stitches, what you're doing is you're moving them purl-wise. I'm putting this, the tip of this into the stitch as if to purl and sliding them over. What this does is this makes sure they don't twist. They're still seated right leg forward as they're supposed to be. And your instructions will tell you, do I hold the stitches, the cable needle, in the front or in the back? So let's those, drop those to the back. It's a little bit clumsy with the giant needles, so you'll excuse me, but good for demos. Then my instructions are going to say, knit the next stitches. I've slipped three to the cable needle, and my instructions say to knit the following three stitches. You see there's a bit of a gap there. I'm just gonna pull the yarn nice and snug so it closes up the gap. Okay, my knit three stitches. Then the next instruction says to knit three from the cable needle. We'll talk about that for a minute. If you're using a nice straight cable needle like this one, it's pretty easy to knit them from the cable needle. Some of the bendier style ones may not make that quite so simple. And for me, I'm struggling because again, it is a bit clumsy because this is so big. So what you can choose to do, perfectly legal, and can be helpful, is return these three stitches from the cable needle back to the working knitting needles. And what that allows you to do is just count them and make sure that they are positioned appropriately. And then I knit those three stitches. And hey presto, my cable is turned. Done. So here's two swatches that I've knitted. I've got a right leaning rope cable here. This is a classic cable, right? Leans to the right. And I created this by holding the cable needle at the back as I did in my demo. And the way you remember this, by the way, is if you hold the cable needle in the back, it turns to the right, I'll be right back. This one is the opposite, turns to the left. The way you make this one is you hold the cable needle in the front. Left front, there's no clever rhyme for that one. There's no left front, that doesn't make any sense, but right back, left front. When you're following a cable pattern, you're actually only doing the cable turn every few rows. In this case, this is a six stitch cable. So typically you turn the cable every six rows. Then the difficult bit becomes, how many rows have I worked? Keeping track of where you are. Here's how you keep track of that and determine whether you're ready to turn the cable or not. Look for this little strand here, this crossover strand. If you see that, if I tug on that, you can see it's connected to this stitch. That's the row I turned the cable on. So if I count up from there, that was my cable turn row. And then I've got above that one, two, three, four, five even rows, which means I've done my cable turn, I've done my five even rows. Ooh, time for a cable again. Something to pay attention to when you're working cables is make sure that your working yarn doesn't get in the way. Because I find for me, I'm so focused on slipping these stitches to the cable needle, if you're not careful if this is in the wrong spot, for example, or your cable needle gets caught, you may end up inadvertently end up creating a yarn over an extra stitch. And that, of course, can, well, play havoc with your stitch count and make things look messy. If you're not sure, I just finished a purl stitch, check with your instructions. You know that the next thing you need to do is knit your cable stitches. So move this into place, get it out of the way, and then start slipping the stitches to the cable needle. Just a little bit of mindfulness on that, and then that will reduce the risk of uh, problem at that point. Now here, I'm gonna hold my cable needle in the front, just for the heck of it. I'm going to again, turn my cable, knit those stitches, and I'm pulling that pretty snug to close the gap. One, two, three, 
And remember here, three is just my demo cable. It could be two, it could be four, it could be six, it could be anything. And you know, you don't even have to have the same number of stitches on the two sides. My sock, for example, I'm turning two stitches over one in many cases. Okay, so I've got my three stitches here and I'm going to do that extra step again because I like to do it just to check my stitches. I return them to the left-hand needle. Again, optional step, but I find that tidy for me. I knit those three, okay. and, and let's be honest here, it looks a bit messy. The row that you turn the cable on, everything's a little bit crumpled and a little bit puckered up, and certainly on the wrong side it looks extremely messy. As soon as you work back and finish the wrong side row, things tidy up very nicely actually, so there's no need to worry about that. But there is one aspect to pay attention to. You are exercising the stitches a bit, you're stretching them out a little bit when you're moving them around on the cable needle, so things are going to look a little bit untidy. Some of these stitches look smaller, some of these stitches look lar larger, really no stress. Blocking, that's why we block our cables, you wash them before you make sure they're, they're done, before you declare it finished, that will tidy everything out. And interesting thing if you've ever looked closely at a commercially knit sweater look at this commercially knit cable sweater you see a bit of looseness in the stitches at the sides of the cables i bet you've never noticed that so even in a commercially knit cable sweater and this one's been washed a whole bunch of times the stitches may be a little inconsistent but honestly in the grand scheme of things you needn't fret about that there is one more thing to pay attention to as well. There is something you can do if you see a lot of looseness. And you may have seen this in ribbing as well. So this is your bonus tip. It, this applies to ribbing. If you're transitioning between knit and purl stitches, you may see a little bit of looseness. You may see inconsistent stitches. This is for two reasons. First of all, a purl stitch actually uses more yarn than a knit because of the way the yarn goes all the way around the needle. That's a long path, okay? It's longer than the path of a knit stitch. But a purl stitch after a knit uses even more yarn because look, not only does it have to go all the way around the needle, but it has to come from the back to the front too. So that's a heck of a lot of extra yarn. I mean, relatively speaking, of course, that's taken up into that purl stitch. And you can end up with a little bit of sloppiness in the transition between a knit and a purl. So if you're seeing that, what you can do is the first purl after knits, do the thing, the cheat, the thing we're not supposed to do, which is wrap the purl stitch the other way round, okay? I'll do it one more time. Wrap the purl stitch, see the short way, okay? And work that purl stitch the short way. Work all of the rest of the purl stitches the normal way. What happens is you end up with a tighter stitch because it's a smaller stitch and that tidies up and pulls these two closer together and really mitigates some of that looseness. You do have to remember when you're coming back on the wrong side though, when you're coming back on the wrong side you just have to remember that that stitch is seated the other way around. So you just knit that through the back loop through the other leg and done. But that little trick can really help you manage the inconsistency in those stitches. Even if you're do indulging in that trick, which I did, and even if I've knitted a few cables before, um, you know, you're not necessarily a beginner at this. You see, there's a, there's a stretched out stitch there, perfectly normal and that comes out with the blocking. The biggest challenge I think can be reading the instructions because different patterns, different designers, different publishers, they'll use different terminology. Sometimes you might see B or F, back or front for where to put the cable needle. So you might see C4B, C4F. Sometimes you might see R or L for right or left leaning, C6R, C6L, you get the idea. Sometimes you see things entirely different. I've seen T2-2 for a same kind of cable. The lesson really there is just consult the glossary. There will always be one. There will always be an explanation of the abbreviations. With Nitty, we put them right in the pattern notes, right at the top, so they're easy in there for you. So when you see a cable, 
just check the glossary and if you're working for a, from a chart again look for the glossary look for the the key it will be there and easy peasy you can do it cables are gorgeous